Hey, on Seattle Refined. Oh, I love it. It's great. It's got a good, uh, good mix of modern, but it looks like it's supposed to be here. We play tourists and check out the new and improved Pike Place Market. Our refined team is still talking about the sweet stuff we found. Plus, and it's an interesting time in history because it actually happened, but not a lot of people know about it. And the greatest story never told hits the Seattle stage, and you can smell them from a mile away. Stuff in there. Oh, look. He went for seconds, which means they must be good. The secret behind Safeco's addictive garlic fries. Seattle Refined starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Gard Swanson. And, man, do we have a show for you today. One of the things I love about Seattle is it's always changing and evolving. Recently, we learned the Space Needle will undergo a major renovation. And Pike Place Market just expanded for the first time in 40 years. The public market is the heart of the city and a perfect example of how Seattle is embracing its historic past and exciting future. We sent John Prentice to check it out. Hey, we're down here at the waterfront and take a look at this. It's the brand new Pike Place Market Front. And I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to check it out. Upstairs, you'll find the booths and vendors that Pike Place is famous for in a brand new open air pavilion. Oh, I love it. It's great. It's got a good, uh, good mix of modern, but it looks like it's supposed to be here. Downstairs in Producers Hall are some exciting new shops and restaurants, some still under construction. Erin Andrews owns Indie Chocolate. It's really good. And is excited to move her business from this tiny shop in the old Pike Place market to her new chocolate factory at the market front. Well, this is going to be our gathering space for classes and events. This will be our cafe and our taco factory. You'll be able to look through these windows and see her chocolate being made from bean to bar. There's nothing better than roasting cacao beans. We love it. It smells like brownies is what people keep coming in and telling us. I can't wait to see it done. I can't either. Probably even more so than you. Next door, Honest Biscuits is open for business. Cooking up, you guessed it, biscuits. How exciting is it to be in this new space? It's, it's awesome. It's, I mean, you can see it's a really beautiful space. Uh, really well designed, I think. The views are spectacular. Now, I'm a big fan of biscuits and gravy. How does yours rate? Uh, well, I hate to brag, but I think uh, ours are the best in the city. We, I, we've actually had people that said it was the best they've ever That's had. That's a big claim. It is, it is. Can it we is. find out? Can I try some? Sure, sure. The special part, I guess, is we use Uli's sausage made uh, right here in Seattle. They make a special blend, spice, spice blend, blend just for us. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. Okay. This is fantastic. Across the way is the future home of Little Fish. Brian Jar has big plans for this space. There's not a whole lot going on in here right now. What's, what's going to be here? There's, so this is going to be Little Fish. It's going to be a restaurant, bar, retail, and food production all on site. Northwest Seafood Restaurant with a specialty in preserved seafood. Kind of this area back over here is going to be the retail and deli area. Okay. Over this way is going to be the restaurant, um, dining, and bar area. Over this way will be the kitchen and food production area. And then back up there, looking out over Western Avenue, will be a mezzanine. We're going to have some of the canning process going on. Small canning operation, but canning operation. So we won't have like automated lines where just things, machinery is just going crazy. But we'll have the full cannery uh, canning system so that people will be able to see that happening, see when things are being canned, see the pro process being done. Plus, the brand new location of Old Stove Brewing is open right now. And the views and brews are spectacular. What do you think of the uh, addition to the market here? I think it's fantastic. I, uh, I'm a little embarrassed. I haven't been here in a while. And to see the, the changes that have happened, it's really, it's really impressive. John Prentice, Seattle for fun. To learn more about who's moving in at Pike Place, log on to our website. Summer is bringing a slew of spectacular theater to Seattle. My name is Christopher John Francis Booth. I like outer space. At the top of our refined must-see list is the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime at the Paramount Theater. The Tony Award-winning play is about a boy who suffers from mild autism who tries to solve a murderous mystery in his neighborhood. Grab your tickets now. Performances start July 25th, but it's only in town for about a week. Also playing right now at the Fifth Avenue Theater, another Tony Award winner, Fun Home. It's a groundbreaking musical about a woman coming to terms with the events of her childhood 
and seeing her parents through adult eyes for the very first time. Fun Home is making its Seattle premiere. It runs through July 30th. Your father, your Meantime, a world premiere over at Act Theater will hit home for anyone who's ever been inspired by a great teacher. It's called Alex and Eris, and we find caught up with the talented cast. Is the king still an oaf? <laughs> It's an interesting time in history because it actually happened, but not a lot of people know about it. And Susa, a Persian city, before them the Elamites, conquered twice by the Assyrians and Cyrus. In because Alex and Eris, director John Langs takes audiences inside the relationship between Greek philosopher Aristotle and his student, a young Alexander the Great, who would go on to conquer the world. It's about those four years that they spent together. It's about the moral compass of leadership. It's about teachers and students, and really a relationship that much more moves in the directions of, of fathers and sons. Chip Sherman makes his Seattle debut in the part of Alex. Alexander, um, in this show particularly, is going through his coming of age story, um, his coming out story, his um, uh, acceptance of his past and what he's moving through. It's just like provocative work that is very um, uh, apropos for the times that we are living through. We called him Dung Beetle. Dara Kennan plays the role of Aristotle, and after nearly 20 years of acting and teaching in Seattle, he is delighted to have landed this plum role. And to be trusted to be the person uh, to, to carry that play forward, to, um, to premiere it at this great theater with, um, with these amazing people that are creating it is, uh, is, is a real gift. And this is a show that asks a lot of questions, um, and certainly we've been concentrating on the relationship of the piece between um, an older professor and a young man. I think this play, is, I keep saying, it's for everybody who's ever had a teacher that you've loved or really hated, and who has sort of shaped your destiny because of their passion about who you are. And I think in a time when we're exploring um, a lot of power dynamics and politics, I think this is gonna be a really big show for us. Alex and Eris runs through August 6th at ACT. For more information, check out our website. It looks like liquid gold. Seattle Refined is just getting started. That's at least 25. Yeah, it's, I think it's like 30. Oh. We learn how to bake a monster cake that's so good and so big, it should have its own zip code. Of course that's good. But first, it's the first thing you smell at a Mariners game. Why garlic fries are such a home run at Safeco Field. We'll be right back. If you're Welcome back to the show. I'm Gart Swanson. Let's face it, you can't always count on a Mariners win at Safeco Field these days, but there's one thing that never strikes out at the ballpark, garlic fries. Washington Grown's Tomas Guzman has more. Peanuts, Cracker Jacks, and a big old hot dog. That's usually what comes to mind when you think about baseball. But here at Safeco Field, home of the Seattle Mariners, it's all about the garlic fries. When you step into Safeco Field, the first thing you notice is that great aroma of garlic. Safeco goes through 100 pounds of garlic every single game. So I chatted with executive chef Michael Johnson to find out what makes those garlic fries so darn good. I think first off is uh, we pride ourselves on local ingredients. Okay. They're Washington potatoes, but it starts from there as a foundation. We deep fry them crispy, but we use fresh parsley, chopped garlic, Parmesan, and people love them. There's no chance these are coming off the menu here, is it? I, I sincerely doubt that, no. <laughs> yeah. Now we're off to see what the fans think of them. And I got to tell you, it was hard to find someone who hadn't had them before. All right, Connie, you a big Mariners fan? I am, I am. And what's a Mariners fan without enjoying these guys, right? The garlic fries, <laughs> yes, aren't they the best? <laughs> and what makes these guys so good? Garlic. Because they're garlic fries. <laughs> these garlic fries even transcend ages. Look at this. Oh, oh there you go. Yummy. Let's give them a try, guys. Ooh. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Again. You heard it here first, right there. They put copious amounts of garlic on this. This, <laughs> they is, did. this is not a vampire treat. I think it's a perfect compliment to the potatoes. Why are these so good? Because they're grown in Washington. Because they're grown in Washington. Yeah. Thank they you. may not agree on the teams, but they can't agree on one thing, and that's the garlic fries are awesome. Awesome. Stuff it in oh, there. Look. He went for seconds, which means they must be good. Mmm. Good. Huh? Yeah. Tune in every Wednesday for more stories like that one from our partners at Washington Grown.
Safeco may have out of this world fries, but Seattle is hosting the WNBA All-Star Game. The 2017 All-Star Game will tip off July 22nd at Key Arena. Apparently, there are a few tickets still available. Sue Bird from the Storm will start for the West. The game will be televised right here on Como TV. The All-Star Game isn't the only big event happening at Seattle Center this weekend. It's also time to sink your teeth into the annual Bite of Seattle. The bite runs all weekend at the center and promises to be as tasty as ever. This year's event features 60 restaurants, craft beer, and cider tasting, live music, a free bite movie night, celebrity chefs, cook-offs, and more. Admission is free, but if you'd like a bit more of a VIP experience, you can purchase tickets to the Bite Cooks Lounge. To learn more, check out our website. Coming up, what does it take to be a Rat City Roller Girl? Refine laces up and heads into the rink to find out. Like us on Facebook, tweet us your story ideas, or shoot us an email telling us what you want to see on the show. You can find our inbox at hello at seattlerefined.com. Seattle Refined will be right back. Welcome back to Refine. You know, summer is usually the time when folks think about getting in better shape, you know, to look good in their swimsuits and their shorts, but there's also so much good food everywhere, it's kind of a struggle. But we may have discovered a solution, thanks to our bestie Heather Earnhardt at the Wandering Goose Cafe, who makes a cake heavy enough to bench press. Inside Heather's Capitol Hill kitchen, secrets passed down from generation to generation are turned into mouth-watering delights. Everything from fried chicken to a confection she calls the brownstone cake. It was named after like the color of the brownstones in New York, yeah. I think, when my family immigrated and came through. So this cake um, is from my great-grandmother. It's a family cake, and um, it's actually only made by a very small community in North Carolina. If you go in eastern North Carolina, they've never heard of this cake. If you go all the way western North Carolina, they've never heard of this cake. But they know about it here in Seattle, don't <laughs> they? They know about it here in <laughs> Seattle. And this cake we're making today is actually for um, a wedding cake. This guy, a uh, couple ordered two cakes for tomorrow. So are you invited to the regular. wedding? Sometimes I do get invited. No, but I never... for this cake? No, I don't know. I don't think That's so. Rude. But I don't have time to go to that. So I have five kids. So, you know, I make this cake every year for their birthdays. And one I had one kid, like, last year. I was like, Mom, do I have to have the brown stone for my birthday? I was like... Really? Yes, <laughs> you do. You do love to have it. How much butter? Um, we're doing two cakes, so this is three pounds. Three pounds of butter? Yeah. And then how much brown sugar? A few pounds, like five or six pounds. Nothing it's like a, brown sugar and butter. This is a boiled brown sugar frosting. So this type of frosting is really not made anymore um, for a reason. It's pretty, It's you'll see, it's a little difficult to frost because you're frosting it while it's Super hot. So Heather, this is taking a long time to get this to boil. <laughs> What's going on here? Normally it doesn't take this long. This is around TV. No, it's um, it's because we're we doubled it. Finally, our watched pot decided to boil. Now Heather, this is smoking hot, right? Yeah, super hot. We're looking at like 185 degrees. So you don't want to touch it. You want to use towels. So you want to have your mixer going with your powdered sugar already. Wow already sifted inside. We're going to pour it pretty steady. You don't want to dump it all in at once, but you definitely want to not be slow about it. Now, should people have a mixer like this at home? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can have a KitchenAid, but you know, for years, I never, I didn't have a KitchenAid. I did this by hand, just with a whisk and a bowl. So it's, and that's what, you know, my grandmother did. Wow, look at that. It looks but, like yeah. liquid gold. So this is still really hot. You know, I didn't go to school for baking. I didn't go to school for cooking. All this is self-taught. And how many layers are you putting on? We're doing three layers. And I think I had one customer actually weigh it before they had it for her birthday. And she said it weighed over like 30 pounds. How much? <laughs> like 30 pounds. So they're big cakes. Can I do something kind of rude here? Call me the wedding crasher. I gotta try one. I gotta try one. I'm the wedding crasher. I'm the wedding crasher. Oh! Gosh, that's good. That's at least 25. 
Yeah, it's, I think it's like 30. Oh. All right, I have one last question for you. Yes. Can I lick that big beater over there? Will you just <laughs> hand it to me? I gotta lick the big this beater. This isn't your normal size beater. <laughs> Do you wanna lick before we go? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. <laughs> That recipe's in Heather's new book, Big Food, Big Love. It's available everywhere. We'll be right back. But first, a refined, shareable moment. It's very popular dish in Hong Kong. And if you uh, go to any Chinese cuisine, they, pretty much they, they are available in every place. So this is like a lemongrass style. We drain, we dry it, and then we just cook it in the real hot water for 15 seconds. And then you really have to chop with the ice cold water again to make the uh, consistency more crispy. The jellyfish, the best part that we use is the body it's because of the texture and that is the, the key. You didn't know this is jellyfish, I didn't tell you, because texture more like a noodle. Welcome back to Refine. When it comes to summertime sports, Seattle has it all. Of course, we've got the storm over at the Key Arena, the Mariners at Safeco, and then there's what's going down at a place called the Rat's Nest. He finds Aaron Mayofsky has the story. The Rat City Roller Girls are fast and furious. They've been on a roll for over a decade, dominating the derby world. We're top ranked room legends in the world. Um, in the world, like literally in the world. in the world. We play against like teams from Australia, London is up in the top. It's truly an international sport. I love it. It's really tough. It's really fun. You get a lot of cool people that you get to skate with and you get to hit hard and take hard hit. It's super intense. I mean, when they describe full contact sports, like with roller derby, like so much impact is happening because it's one of the only sports where you actually play offense and defense at the same time. So the jammers, which are the three people with the stars on their helmet, okay. those are the people that score points for the team. So they do most of the work for offense. The rest of the group of people, there's usually four on one team and four on another team. Those are the blockers and those are people that form the pack. So racking up points is pretty simple. Once the jammers bust through the pack, they score points for every skater they pass. With nicknames like Renegade Ruthie, Cinnamon Slam, and Chocolate Coma, these ladies bring their A-game every night. And after watching the action, I wanted to give it a whirl. I'm doing this. Whoa. Yeah. When you look at someone like me, what do you think? <laughs> the main goal is staying with um, your teammates if you're a blocker because you can often do more effective work if you're with other people. Man, this is going to be tough. I don't know. I think I'm going to get some bruises. I think I'm going to have some shin splints. I'm not sure. It does happen. After a few minutes, I was locked and loaded with my new teammates. After a tough time mixing it up, I didn't win any medals, but made an impression, earning a roller derby nickname. Okay, so how, how do you guys think I did? Did you give me a name? What do you think? Um, Was I good enough? Oh. And I feel like you earned the name Aaron Bakovsky. Aaron Bakovsky. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. We'll see you next time right here on Seattle Refined.